Namaskar, Nileshok here uh, in another session of uh, Shraddha and Pradnya. Today in this session, part 27 of Shraddha and Pradnya, we are going to discuss Samudra Mantan. All right. And this began with a request from my good friend, a wing commander, now retired wing commander, Shashikant Oak, same last name, from Pune in India. By the way, uh, before we get into the subject, just a little bit about uh, Shashikantji Oak. He is retired wing commander from Indian Air Force. Uh, he is also doing very sincere and serious and tenacious efforts to study, to validate, to analyze, to document the Nadi Shastra or Nadi Grantha. Everything is a together one subject uh, of India. In current times, it is predominantly popular, predominantly practiced in the Indian in southernly state of Tamil Nadu. And uh, the most of the Nadi Grantha, to the best of my limited knowledge, are in uh, Tamil. And uh, if you want to know more about it, you can contact uh, Shashikanji. But there is also a lot out there uh, in social, I don't mean social media, on internet that you can check. One of the limitation or, uh, yeah, limitation, challenge, whatever you want to call it, with the study of this subject is the fact that uh, these grantha, these plates are in uh, Tamil. And unless you have a knowledge of Tamil, it becomes challenging to uh, do the validation, but he's still doing it. Uh, okay. Uh, anyways, so he, uh, he and me communicate uh, all the time. Uh, I have met with him multiple times. In fact, when I was uh, uh, in Chennai, this is a few years ago, I was giving a, a plenary talk at the Sudeshi Indology Conference. I think it was uh, 2018, maybe uh, 17, 18, something like that, four or five years ago. And at that time, when he came to know, Shashikanji came to know that I'm going to Chennai, he uh, tried his best and actually was successful in connecting me, connecting me with some individual based in Chennai who was going to take me to one of these Nadi readers and I was going to uh, do some validation. Now, I did meet with this individual, but as things happened, the, the thing did not go through. Uh, actually, I didn't have a chance to go to a place and so on and so forth. Anyways, so Shashikanji and myself, we continue to communicate. Something else uh, I should mention is uh, his connection with great Indic researcher, uh, P.N. Oak. Many of you know that. Many of you uh, assume that uh, he's my father. <laughs> I get that all the time. People will say, I have read works of your father, P.N. Oak, and now I'm reading your work, and I'm impressed with both of you, and so on. And thank you for those type of compliments. With uh, P.N. Oak, I don't have a direct relation, uh, of course, in genealogy, if we go backwards for, say, uh, 10 generations, I'm very confident that we will find the relation. In fact, there is a Oka Kula Grantha that has been written and that has been updated, you know, just like Puranas are updated. And so I have the old copy and uh, it will be interesting to see how far back in um, genealogy we have to go before the connection comes. But the connection of uh, Shashikanji Oak with P.N. Oak is uh, very close. He's a nephew of P.N. Oak. Uh, a while ago, I don't remember how long ago was that, and I don't know even how to search for the email. Son of P.N. Oak also wrote to me at one point, uh, but I have uh, that 
exactly when it was written, what was his name. I think that's too, that's not clear in my mind. But Shashikan joke, I continue to communicate all the time. Anyways, so we, we do this, we communicate through um, different uh, channels. And so he wrote, what he has written is in Marathi. Okay, so this is good for uh, Hindi speaking folks, you know. So for example, you should be able to read this and uh, then also see how much you understand, okay? And uh, if you understand it, that's great because that's uh, that's how Marathi, uh, most of the Marathi speaking people, certainly I can talk for myself, how we learn Hindi, okay? So if you find this difficult, if you find this easy, then understand why we find it relatively easy to understand and uh, learn Hindi. On the other hand, if you find this difficult, understanding the meaning of it difficult, then do understand Marathi people also find it difficult to learn, especially the pure Hindi. Okay, So it's not very easy uh, for Marathi speakers to give a speech. Like, because the reason I'm saying this is everyone... Uh, most people, uh, I should say many people, not most people, keep on saying, Nilashji, please speak in Hindi, otherwise your message will not reach the uh, majority of uh, Indians. Uh, well, first thing, that is not true. Okay. The second thing is Hindi is more like my third language. Uh, also, what happens is because I learned it just through uh, common sense, you know, by knowing Marathi and then translating that to Hindi or also uh, through Hindi movies and whatnot. It's not a pure Hindi. Now, frankly, that is true for most of the Hindi speaking people. They speak Urdu mixed and many other non-Hindi uh, words in it. And that has become Hindi. But just do understand that uh, somebody saying, if I don't speak in Hindi, then it will not reach majority of Indians is a myth. Okay, the person who is serious enough to understand what's going on will go through the pain to understand other language if that's what the limitation is. And sometimes the limitations are insurmountable. Like I'm referring to this Nadi Shastra, you know, unless somebody is totally dedicating uh, his or her life to understanding Nadi Shastra, like Shashikanji has done since his retired years, and he might have done when he was in service. I don't know the whole history. But then you, you have to be passionate enough to learn that, okay? So my request to uh, many who keep on requesting Hindi, Hindi, when are you going to say in Hindi? I would say learn English, learn Marathi, because I have given talks in Marathi. I do try my best to speak in Hindi also, at uh, such forums such as uh, Jaipur Dialogues, for example, when I have done a few conversation talks with uh, Neera Jatriji, I have tried my best to speak in Hindi. But uh, let's turn the table. Let me put the ball in your courts. Uh, the Hindi speaking folks who continue to ask this, uh, ask, make a request for me to speak in Hindi. Why don't you learn English? Why don't you learn Marathi? and then understand what I am doing and translate it, okay? If you take a specific uh, session of mine and translate it and speak in your language uh, in uh, Hindi, or uh, if you are technically savvy without involving me whatsoever, take my talk and uh, add, uh, download it, add Hindi captions then hey you then i can put it on youtube channel okay and uh, people can watch it in with at least with the hindi captions okay or maybe even dub it if you un if you understand the technology uh, dub it in hindi okay just like the movies are dubbed then we can put it on hindi so don't just be lazy and tamasic and just ask for something be part of the dharma be part of the swadhyaya okay and do something. Okay, so what it is written here is Dev Ani Danavat Samudra Manthan Zale. Okay, everyone, every uh, Indian, every Hindu, we can say knows about, heard about this Samudra Manthan between Dev and Dana, Sura and Asur. You are going to find uh, different uh, narrations of this. Tachi Kala Sangati Kashiya Sel. What could be <clears throat> the timing of it? Okay, the dating of it. Because, you know, although I didn't start necessarily with, uh, you know, my research uh, with in dating, 
Sometime I will show you my old folder, you know, that goes back to mid 80s, like when I was in school, like uh, high school. Uh, and that folder in, with some changes and some notebooks I have survived, you know. So where I started uh, researching in different areas, it so happened at some point mm, I got into the dating. Again, it wasn't uh, dating wasn't the point when I started. The curiosity was to test the validity of uh, uh, certain ancient Indian text. And that led to the very successful uh, dating of Mahabharata, Ramayana, Rugved, Sushruta, Bhagavad Puran, uh, Vishnu Puran, um, Mit Maitrayani, uh, Upanishad, and Prashna Upanishad. I mean, there are many others. There's a lot that has not been even, uh, uh, even published, or I have had no chance to talk about it. So that will come in its own time. But be, maybe because of that also, like uh, just like Shashikanji is asking, uh, like what? Hey, how can we uh, can we connect it with a specific dating, like specific uh, epoch, specific era? Datun Mirnarya was to Devata and Chababat Aple Vichar Zanun Gyaila Audel. And if you remember, those of you who have done this reading, narrations, familiarity, those who have familiarity with Samudra Mantan, they know a lot of things came out of Samudra Mantan. So, hey, what about it? And what is the connection of these things that came out of this Samudra Mantan? Okay. And uh, he would be curious to know. Now, people also ask me uh, when I mention a specific day, like 27, 28 June, 5633 BCE as the birthday of Bhagwan Krishna or 29 November 12240 BCE as the birthday of Bhagwan Ram. And naturally, you know, those are uh, great personalities of our civilization, of the world civilization, because their message is for the world. Okay, whether world is capable of comprehending that, capable of implementing that, that's a different story. They are going, everyone is going to do it. And it doesn't mean Indians versus non-Indians. Within Indians, you are also going to see all kinds of variations, you know, people's interpretation of this, like as Krishna says uh, in Bhagavad Gita, Avajananti Mahamuda Manushim Tanumashritam. Okay, so that will happen at different levels. But because of this success, it's not unusual, and I don't think it's unreasonable when people ask me, um, Nilajji, will you, uh, can you tell me about the birthday of uh, Matsya Uttar? Okay, Kurma Uttar, and so on and so forth. And uh, this question, which is a great question, I mean, Shashikanji has asked, like, hey, can we put that in a connection of a specific era, specific time? In general, he, say, he said, Kala Sangati. Okay, so uh, I thought I will uh, respond to that. I did tell him I, you know, that I'll be responding to it. And um, usually, I never have a luxury of asking, uh, connecting with these people. Just the time resources are not there. Uh, if they are okay with men, their name being mentioned, as such, it doesn't matter, by the way, uh, because the question is more important. But because I know uh, Shashikanji. Uh, very well for a long time. Uh, I just asked, is it okay if I mention his name? He said, absolutely, go ahead, mention it. You know, so I'm mentioning it. What you see here is a, a beautiful sculpture of Samudra Manthan and at a very right place, Suvarnabhumi. This is modern day Thailand. Okay, Siam, Siam. Uh, Suvarnabhumi Airport, right at the Suvarnabhumi Airport. Okay, a beautiful sculpture of uh, Samudra Mantan. What you see here on the right side are the devas, okay, pulling towards the tail of Vasuki. And on the other side where the uh, face of Vasuki is, the Vasuki, the Naga, okay, it has been used as a rope in that Manthani, Mathani, because it comes from Manthan. You know, the Manthan of the... Uh, what you say, the cream of milk. And then when that is goes through the manthan with some water being added, okay, that's a samudra manthan, kshira sagar, white uh, liquid. 
there and the makhan comes at the top, okay? The cream comes at the top. And we are going to see the kind of cream that came out uh, out of this Samudra Manthan. And of course, uh, you would know that the Meru Parvat, you know, was used as the Ravi, that Mathani, okay, in the middle. For support is that Kurma, okay? Kurma at the base for the support for that Meru Parvat. And it, it has a reference to Mandara also, you know, which again all goes into astronomy, guys. Again, time and time again. Uh, of course, the question is, oh, when did this happen? Ah, this question is not any different than saying, when is the birthday of a Matsya Uttar? As you go back in the past, you know, at some point, our ability to track things with current level of science and technology becomes limited. Okay. As the science and technology improves, our ability actually may expand, you know, and we may be able to track some stuff more. But there is another aspect, which is to say the amount or the type or the kind of empirical, physical evidence that survives also gets becomes less and less. Okay. That's one aspect. But there is a bigger aspect. I mean, are these all things described in our ancient Indian narratives? Are those like physical things that literally happen? The answer is no, not everything that is mentioned is literally like physically happening. Well, in some sense, it is physically happening, but not the way each one of us would understand it. Okay, if we take it too literal, then we have got a problem. Now, for a... Uh, a typical human mind, you know, at the end of the day, we want to see something concrete. Like that's where the Saguna Puja for a Nirguna Parabrahma comes into the picture. You know, as long as we are trapped in our body in a form, we need a form to understand the formless. It is something similar. If this is a say, astronomy, this has a phenomenal astronomy basis, but not alone the celestial basis, but also the terrestrial basis. It's a manthan, but manthan of what? And now somebody is asking for a special day, just like the birthday of a Matsya Avatar and birthday of a Kurma Avatar and birthday of a Varaha Avatar, birthday of a Narasimha Avatar. Then the question itself is not correct because a individual is taking this to be, a individual is concretizing it as a literal physical event or physical event fixed in time. And the answer is it is not. Okay, so let's look at some of the things. Again, um, just to give you what can be anchored in a specific time. For example, yes, we can do that. We can anchor European enlightenment, you know, over a short period of uh, time range. Uh, it's estimated to have occurred uh, very recently, uh, starting with 1637 and until 1789. So I'm not sure what stopped the European Enlightenment in 1789. I think uh, 1785 is when Sir William Jones came to India. And after that, it is all uh, the world enlightenment laid by the uh, knowledge from Indian civilization. So maybe uh, that's why they stop it there. I'm not sure. But yeah, you, it can be noted down. Google says so, or I think Wikipedia says so. Anyways, in that context, compare the enlightenment that the Indian civilization had. Uh, Mahabharat, a huge uh, Aitihasic text that has survived with us and a, all the evidence of Mahabharat, both celestial and terrestrial, decisively takes us to 5561 BC, more than 7,500 years ago. So yeah, there are some events that we can concretize. We can mention a specific date, specific year, sometimes specific down to the month and a day, as in the case of Mahabharata. Ditto for Ramayana, like we can take Valmiki Ramayana, which has survived with us, and all the evidence, again, celestial, but also terrestrial, astronomy, but non-astronomy evidence, all points to a 13 millennium BC, but not just a broad period, a specific year, 12,209 BC for Ram Ravan Yuddha, like 6 January, January, uh, January, I'm saying like Marathi, 6 January, 12,208 BC for Rama killing Ravana, 
29 November, I mentioned, 29 November, 12,240 BC for Ramajanma. Because the evidence exists, and these events are not that ancient. We are only talking of like 15,000 years ago. Okay, so, and the, the, the in ancient Indian narratives depicting these detailed descriptions have survived. Okay, and the type of evidence that is embedded in this uh, text, fortunately, by luck, whichever way, whichever way you want to understand it, with the uh, science and technology at our disposal, we can correlate, we can validate, we can corroborate. And, you know, that's why we should feel very confident. Ditto for Rugveda, at least in terms of understanding the lower limit. Okay, we can definitely say that Rugveda is older than 22,000 uh, BC, older than 24,000 years. That doesn't mean it was written in 24,000 years ago. It was written long before. With confidence, we can say it is definitely older than 24,000. That's all we can say. However, as we go back in further antiquity, not only go back in further antiquity, but even some of the events for which we do not have a sufficient evidence, we will not able to date them. And we have to accept that reality. But what we are going to talk today, or we are talking today, Samudra Manthan, is of a different kind. In what way? It is a metaphor. Now, granted, the metaphors are there in Ramayana, metaphors there are there in Mahabharata. In fact, it's so beautiful to read Mahabharat, especially Mahabharat. When you are reading a terrestrial narration, okay, a story of some king and a queen, literally from say Kuru dynasty or Ikshwaku dynasty, and suddenly the story will smoothly go into a astronomy jargon. Okay, so suddenly it turns into some metaphor and we don't know where to draw this line. Okay, where the celestial stopped or where the terrestrial stop, it happens both ways. When, where, the celestial, uh, where, where the terrestrial stop, and we transition into celestial metaphors, and then coming backwards, you know, just like that uh, oblique crossing of the ecliptic by planets, going to the north of the ecliptic and coming to the south of the ecliptic. It just happens so smoothly, and we don't have that line in, the, in between. We don't know when it changed. Okay, Samudra Mantan is something like this. You will hear some characters there, okay, that you may able to think in the historical terms, but most of the characters there are to be understood as metaphors. Okay, now, there are many, and there are going to be many, who are going to look at this Samudra Mantan as a literal thing happening, and therefore they may want to know the exact timing of it. Now, I don't think Shashikanji asked in that fashion, but uh, he might have. The point is, uh, at least I wouldn't able to do it. First thing, the evidence doesn't exist, but it is not a, a specific concrete event to date. And I'm going to give you my interpretation of what this Samudra Mantan is. And definitely would like to hear your comments uh, in, this, you know, in, in the YouTube video. Uh, this is a work of uh many uh, or work of a few should i shouldn't i should not say many no there are not many unfortunately but a work of a few individuals but especially putting together and analyzing and synthesizing is actually even fewer okay uh for example uh, i don't have a permission to mention everybody's name there are few others but the name uh, i want to mention which is i would say is the key individual behind the creation of this is uh, Rupa Bhatiji, okay? And um, so we could put together with the help of uh, other wonderful individuals, okay? And at some point I'll mention their names. Uh, is this 75,000 years uh, long narration history of Indian civilization, Hindu civilization, of Hinduism, of Hindutva, and so on and so forth, okay? Uh, different types of evidence, okay? Just starting from the top, for example, different aspects like a genealogy and a list of kings and Brahmarshis and Rajarshis, the Bharatiya civilization. Then purely on Agastya, okay? And that subject Rupa Bhatiji is researching for a long time. It is such a challenge to take all this massive 
information uh, or clues about Agastya and turning them into the stuff that is understandable to common reader. Okay, that's what she's working on. If you look at the astronomy observations, you know, the evidence exists in all of these categories, archaeology, okay, and domestication of animals and horses, I mean, horses, animal, and animals, evolution of human beings, okay, we are talking all kinds of things, and the evidence actually exists that takes us to 75,000 years. In fact, it goes beyond that. We, for this particular uh, diagram that you are saying, we decided somewhat artificially, you can say, but somewhat uh, logically to stop at the Toba explosion that happened uh, 75,000 years ago. And if you just want to see the kind of research that uh, Rupaji is doing, along with few others, myself and others, is like... Uh, a potential potential clues we don't know everything is going to fall in this fashion things will change okay we do know certain things are definitely very concrete uh, very uh, we can feel very confident about it is like you know say up to 24000 years i don't know if you have a i have a vertical line somewhere but there are pieces of evidence in all different categories that from an evidential point of view allude us to 220,000 plus years of Hindu civilization, Indian civilization, Bharatiya civilization. Okay, these don't, don't get too stuck into these words as long as you understand what is being conveyed through these words. Okay, all right. So back to Samudra Manthan. Now I'm going to share a quote from uh, one wonderful individual. Uh, you can check if you are interested on Google. He was a uh, he was a Christian priest, or you know, in in a very in a religious organization, some individual, some holding some position. I don't understand much about the priestly hierarchy in Christianity. In fact, what they did is when they came in contact with Hinduism, they superimpose the priestly hierarchy and trying to understand the, the you know the Varna system. Okay, and then another mess they made is that cast and all that. I mean, you know, you know that, or if you don't know it, you have every reason to read it, not from them. <laughs> you know, not you'll be confused for another 300 years. Okay, they were are confused, they were confused, you know, in terms of understanding this. But this individual, he was uh, holding some position within the priestly community within Christianity, you can say, and at some point um he realized uh, uh, you know, the dogmatic nature of it. And uh, I don't know if he considers himself as an atheist, but definitely he left the priestly duties and he said, well, Christianity to be understood from a cultural point of view, yes, but not the in the way, from a, not from the religious point, the dogmatic point of view, so on. Uh, but anyways, uh, he does hold debates with uh, Christian um, uh, Christian followers or Christian members, you know, in a very dignified way he has done that. You may be able to check them on uh, Google. Uh, he is he's a decent researcher. But I love this quote of his. And it's not limited to Christianity, by the way. You know, it applies to Hinduism very much so. It applies to everything, okay? It applies to humanity. Uh, very nice quote. It's worth remembering, you know, having it by heart. Uh, and I will be quoting it multiple times. I mean, I uh, I love this. I, I became familiar with this quote, I don't know, like 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I can't even exactly remember. But anyways, let's get to the quote. He says, my point, that is his point, once again, is not that those ancient people told literal stories and we are now smart enough to take them symbolically, symbolically, but that they told them through symbolical, they told them symbolically, and we are now dumb enough to take them literally. This applies to a good amount of narrations across all the religious literature and also our dharmic literature. Okay. Now, if you want to explore the, explore through this, we need that Daivi Pravrutti, you know. We must be fearless and also we must be humble. 
humble that whatever we are interpreting could be wrong and fearless that as long as you are bound by the search of a truth, you should, you should feel comfortable interpreting it certain ways, test those interpretation predictions against empirical evidence, against experiments and see what you find. Okay, just a wonderful quote. Now, this should be a good segue for getting back to Samudra Mantan. Samudra Mantan, as I see it, as I interpret it, is, is a metaphor, a metaphor for the development of civilization. So it is to be, they, I mean, whenever the metaphor of Samudra Mantan, the Samudra Mantan descriptions were added, you find them everywhere. You find them in Ramayana, you find them in Mahabharata, and you find them in Puranas. I mean, you find them everywhere. They, it is my conviction that they were writing this symbolically. Okay. They told them symbolically. They wanted, they meaning our great sages, and they wanted us to understand them symbolically. And I'm not saying all of us, but some of us who are dumb enough to take them literally. Now that leads to a confusion. That leads to a confusion to uh, say exactly when Samudra Mantan happened, but say exactly, uh, oh, what is the uh, birthday of Matsya Avatar? That's like an evolution of uh, living, uh, living life on this planet. Okay. And that is been symbolically is been told to us through the Avatar. Now, does that mean everything in avatar is a symbol? Well, yes and no. For example, Rama, Bhagwan Rama existed, Bhagwan Krishna existed, but they are used as a symbol. They are used as a symbol to convey something. Like for example, we say Bhagwan Ram uh, is number avatar number seven, and Bhagwan Krishna is avatar number eight. But lo and behold, if you go and read the list from Bhagavad Puran, you are going to get a different list with a different numbering. Again, you will find Ram and Krishna, but not necessarily number seven and number eight. Okay, And of course, you will find not just Dashautar, but you are going to find more Avatar. You are going to find the list in which Gautam Buddha is not mentioned as a ninth Avatar. Okay? That is a relatively recent development. Of course, it has to be after Gautam Buddha. Think of it. Okay, Anyways... Let's move on. So as I interpret, it is a symbol, symbol for the cultural development, symbol for the civilizational development, the Hindu civilization, Bharatiya civilization, Indian civilization, Hindutva civilization. I have also mentioned that once you go beyond, say, 4,000 years, beyond the uh, timeline when these uh, Abrahamic religion, religions grew up, and by the way, uh, I'm corresponding with uh, another uh, Jewish uh, researcher. Uh, again, I don't have a permission to mention his name, so I'll not mention it. And uh, he is uh, discussing with me, he's providing me some references, how, uh, where these uh, Abrahamic, uh, you know, roots came from, uh, how it has possibly the Indian connection. Uh, and that's not the subject today, but uh, that's why, what I'm saying is also fitting beautifully with what uh, he's the kind of information he's providing. So if you go back, say, beyond two, uh, beyond 4,000 years, and I'm just putting that as a uh, crude uh, approximation for timing, there is no us versus them in the sense of there are world civilizations. Yes, I mean, you know, sometimes the communication is uh, extensive, other times the communication is not extensive, but they are connected. It's just very amazing and impressive when you start seeing the connection of South America with India, for example, and with Egypt, with India, with Sumeria, like the Iraq, with India, uh, with Israel and Jordan and Syria, with India, and so on. Of course, the East of India connection is very well known and still kind of preserved. The West uh, connection towards Egypt and all, most of the connections kind of got destroyed with the very offensive Islam or very offensive uh, Abrahamic uh, crusades and so on and so forth. That's not a subject today again. Back to Samudra Mantan. So it's a metaphor for civilizational development. And who are the uh, deva, uh, devas and daityas? You know, the daityas are like sons of Diti. Again, that itself is a metaphor. That is not to say the individuals in the daitya 
Kula were not there, like Hiranyakashpu, Hiranyaksha, Prahlad, Virochan, Bali. Yeah, they were individuals. They were hum human beings and they were kings, very royal kings, many of them virtuous kings. Okay, Prahlad is a good example. So is a Virochana, so is a Bali and so on. Again, we are not discussing all those stories, but they are related to this. And then we have a Deva. In fact, uh, one of the thing, um, and you will see this variation in the stories, one of the byproduct of this Samudra Manthan was a Sura. Okay, Sura as in alcoholic, uh, alcohol, alcoholic beverage, you can say, but also alcohol in the sense of chemistry, okay, in the sense of science, which is used for preservation and so on and so forth. Like our Draksha serve, Asavas and Arishtas, you know, but Asavas, they have naturally formed alcohol up to 8%, almost same as in wine, you know. Now, of course, you don't drink it like wine, okay, but it's this technique in, technique in preservation, the best use of uh, the bacteria, the good bacteria, the yeast and all of that, milk curling into uh, paneer, cheese, um, uh, yogurt, uh, I mean, uh, dahi, you know, whatever you want to call it, is all basically part of the civilizational development. So that's what you're going to see. The, the reason I was saying with the Deva, it came to me, think of the words Sura and Asura. Okay, there is this story and I will encourage you to go and read it instead of me telling and making this video longer. Is that when the Sura came up, okay, uh, and there was something else, but many variations. But Deva took it, okay? So therefore, they are Sura. Asura chose not to. Isn't that interesting? Okay, over and of course, Asura is also used as a great designation in uh, Rigveda. Asura is the word used to Varuna and used to Indra in a very dignified way. Over time, different meanings got attached to. Uh, and that's another subject, another episode possibly somewhere down the down the lane okay we will we might do it how uh, the words attain certain meaning there is a one way simply that you understand from the vyutpatti you know the root word and the vakrana you know that is one way of uh, how the words build and words develop but culturally some words get a superimposed meaning on it you know so think of that as an adhyatmic process you know so the word exists like yoga Yoga literally from a, a Vakrana point of view may mean like a you connect and so on and so forth. But now we understand yoga in a various ways. For example, multiple meanings, by the way, like yoga as in Hatha Yoga, yoga as in Patanjali Yoga Sutra, but yoga as in like a, what a coincident thing that we made uh, today. Or when Krishna says yoga kshemam vahamyam has a different meaning. Number of these meanings are not coming from a Vakrana, but rather they are coming from a Nirukta. Okay, so think of if the Vakran is like a grammar uh, or think of like a literal, then think of a Nirukta as an Adhyatma, okay, which is a symbolic meaning that is getting attached to it. And Samudra Mantan should be taken in that Nirukta fashion. Of course, somebody will literally take oh, the ocean, they churn the ocean using snake as the rope and they extracted stuff. And now please tell me uh, what is, when did it, that happen? That is not a question, at least for me, because I don't have answer, because I do not understand it that way. I do not interpret it that way. I disagree with that interpretation of it as a literal event. So let us see what it is. The different things, 14, sometimes the list may have number additional number of items. Sometimes the number of items that came out of it uh, that are listed are not exactly identical. Sometimes the number is not identical. Sometimes the things listed are not identical. Directionally, they are same. Again, that should also tell us that what it is telling us. Um, it Essentially, these are the byproducts or these are the outcomes of this civilizational development. Now, civilizational development happens over a long period of time and the long is a relative word. In fact, that word is there into that mandara. Okay, we have the meru, but we have the mandara. Think of meru as the axis of the, the axis mundi, the axis of the world, you know, which is also identified with the skanda. Okay, but the mandara, and again, it goes back into astronomy, guys, now. Okay, it is that the precession of the Earth's axis, that 26,000 year cycle, slow motion. Okay, now Mandara can be interpreted in Manda. That's what it is, Mandara, you know, and if you want to say Mandaravi, <laughs> like Ravi as in Mathani, you know. So that is that slow motion. So civilizational development, some of these developments take 
significant time. Let's look at what those developments are and how can we understand uh, this uh, metaphor of Samudra Manthan in the context of civilizational development. I mean, it is civilizational development when I'm saying in the context, okay? It's a symbol for civilizational development. What do we see here in the pictures? Like quick few things that we can identify and we, we can look at another picture, okay? So we see their horse, Uchashrava, for example, then elephant, like think of as a Airavat. We see Lakshmi, okay? That is uh, wealth, that is... Um, wealth that is used also as a representation of a wealth in commerce. I mean, you can understand in multiple uh, different ways. Uh, let's see what we find. Okay, then um, uh, Kamadhenu. Okay, so how do we look at that? I'll, I'll give you my uh, two cents for not just for Kamadhenu, but also for elephant, horse and so on. We see the Yadnya. Uh, I, I think that's, that's that. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, okay, Dhanvantari. Okay, the medicine. Uh, praj, parijatak Uruksha, which is to say understanding herbs, understanding trees, their benefits, their plantation, their domestication in the sense of agriculture uh, and so on. Uh, Brahma, okay, the, the, the beautiful progeny, you know, which is to say what, like the science of genetics, okay, science of uh, matching the pairs for a healthy, uh, prosperous, beautiful progeny. And so on. Okay, we have some additional pictures, so we will go there. Um, also, when you see, I mean, symbolically now you can interpret, you know, in ten different ways. But I'm just giving you one of the many ways possibly. So kurma, kurma is showing what? Kurma is showing multiple things. One thing is it is showing patience because it goes very slow. It talks about just like Bhagavad Gita mentions the sita pradnya. It talks about sadhana which is to say sadhana requires tenacity, okay? It is to be, it, it's like endurance in conduct. You don't give up sadhana. Even a sannyasi is not to, is not ought to give up a sadhana, okay? Sadhana is for everyone as long as you are in this body. So that tenacity, the, that sadhana, that what the tortoise or uh, kurma does, but also savadhata, you know, when required to take yourself out of, the external distractions, okay? So that's what that representation is. The Meru is the representation of stability, like think of Sthavaranam Himalaya, as Krishna says in Avibhuti Yoga. Mandar is that patience, okay? Perseverance, it takes a long time, okay? And so on and so forth. And again, you need a cooperation, okay? Devi and Asuri Pravruti, for example, or think of Sattva, Raja and Tama, by themselves, one is not good or bad, but of course, you should understand their relative taratamya, relative importance. Mahatva maapan taratamya. Okay, and therefore Krishna is saying, go towards satya, go towards satya. Eventually, you have to even give up satya. Tregunya vishaya veda nistraigunyo bhava arjuna and so on. All right, uh, let's uh, look at a few other pictures, somewhat better pictures. Uh, two others, let's come to this one here. And they have written names. So halahal, like a poison, uh, you know the story. Again, understand the metaphor behind it, like a Shiva consuming it, okay, which is what? Uh, you see, al although a poison in capable hands, in able hands, it becomes useful, okay? The, there is a whole branch in uh, Ayurveda, uh, what is a Vishaushadi, you know, using the poisonous substances to uh, convert them into medicines. Uh, Professor... Uh, Balram Singh Ji, you know, who uh, belongs from a Ram, Rama's, Rama's land, from Ayodhya area. And what he researches here is like, you know, uh, one of the uh, most, uh, or if not the most uh, severe tox toxin, you know, botulinum. But when uh, mani manipulated in certain fashion, you know, through, through a sophistication of the science and technology of chemistry and different processes, it turns into a useful medicine. So think of that. Then the moon, we will come to that, what that symbolizes. Kaustuba, in, think in terms of the precious stones, precious metals, and so on. Kamadhenu is a domestication of animals, okay? Our symbiotic relationship with them. That is same for horse, same for elephants. And these are symbols again, you know? This is not to say only limited to this. There is no point asking a question, oh, why not goat is mentioned there? And what about the chicken and uh, the pig? Well, in the 
ten avatars it is mentioned as a varaha my point is it is a symbolism it that one particular symbol symbolizes a lot more okay ramba is basically think of as a science of genealogy and genetics and how the wedding pairs are made and so on and so forth for a healthy uh, progeny when that is lost you can see around the world you know when that those things are not taken into account the disasters that it creates varna sankara and what not we have a dhanvantari there because you know what we want we want uh, good food for sustenance and then good health where is that food coming from from agriculture where is that agriculture symbolize few things in the kama dhenu okay in the ucheshrava in the elephant elephant for very hard task the moon that is the calendar representation of a calendar count shell that is like not only you are extracting on the ground for precious stones and what not and for animals and domestication and grazing but also exploring the oceans okay you can take that count shell as a representation of that sura is you can take this as a preservation of food okay uh, parijata katri think of this as uh, uh, understanding the Uh, good properties useful properties of the trees of the herbs uh, and so on and so forth dhanusha is for safety and protection amruta now this is what the science of longevity ayurveda okay again dhanvantari is when uh, you you are not feeling well how to fix yourself medicine and so on and so forth all right uh, so if you have to make a quick high level summary of this i would say let's go through it halahal think of that as a vishaushadi as we think of a civilizational development moon think of this as a functional and sophisticated calendar for agriculture for navigation medicine and accurate and precise time keeping kaustubha think of this in terms of the civilizational development the understanding but development of techniques for extracting and making use of precious stones gems metals uh, basically through exploration of the land shankha think of this as a exploration of the oceans for the pearls for the count shells uh, for seaweeds and whatever you find fish of course and whatever you find useful from the ocean dhanvantari think of this as a science of medicine the development of ayurveda kama dhenu as a domestication of animals now in what way kama dhenu you know it's useful in every way just like a kalpa vruksha okay tree is considered like kalpa vruksha is what like in konkan we call coconut tree is like a kalpa vruksha and frankly that is so true every aspect of coconut tree is made use of in a extremely ingenious meaningful ways okay those people who have grown in these kind of coastal belts whether east or west uh, would easily relate to that how every single part of coconut tree is made use of okay for very ingenious very useful very interesting applications uh in case of kamadhenu or cow additional and reliable food source milk disinfectant like you know her um, mutra like gomutra cow dung everything you know may as a medicine uh cow dung as a nutrition fertilizer for the field and transportation bullock carts and so on if you look at airavat the elephant domesticated think of this as a mechanical drive for heavy tasks okay uh, again um uchchashrava horse domesticated animal for speedy transportation lakshmi efficient and reliable means for commerce you know which are way in terms of coins and so on and so forth but many other applications of it barter system uh, and so on okay uh, ramba that beautiful lady there you know so development of varna ashrama system jati system uh, jati in the sense of a dis, uh, jati in the sense of a profession of course that gets translated as a, a european casta or caste that's a different story and science of genealogy wedding matches science of selection of partners for healthy progeny you know that is symbolized in it this is my interpretation okay if you have another interpretation hey absolutely create a talk share with others let others uh, also understand what you are thinking uh, amruta okay that's to understand the lifestyle Uh, also getting into adhyatma but also sanskar also medic medicinal portions for longevity so you can take it in 10 different ways a uh, bow and arrow in this case uh, the dhanusha is shown so bow uh, that's a weapon development for six safety and security protection defending the bad elements and so on so forth parijata katri development of herbs flowers and such things for what perfumes medicines and more uh, sura now in this case list of 14 
most cases it is a list of 14 again remember it is symbolically uh, symbolically presented so some places you find a uh, bigger list or if the items are not exactly matching with this that's not a uh, time to throw the towel and say now what do i do <laughs> okay if to, if say 10 people write books on indian civilization or development of indian civilization they may focus on a slightly different aspects of Indian civilization and the contributions and development and inventions of Indian civilization and how it went uh, around the world and so on. Okay, so there will be some variation. Exactly that's the case. Sura, think of this as a science of preservation. Okay, very important. We don't think it like this. For example, common people don't think it like this. As soon as we hear the word Sura as in alcohol, like people just go on a guard, rightfully so, because as an addiction, it can create disaster and India is a good example like many other parts of the world uh, this but when you look at it for example Ayurveda Ayurveda simply says alcohol at its primary nature it's a food and it is a useful thing for many purposes like in chemistry I mean I'm a chemical engineer in chemistry uh, it is useful in chemical processing it is useful in many ways so when understood in the right way in medicines in Ayurveda uh, it so is, think of this as a science of preservation, okay, uh, of agricultural produce, just like the whole art of pickling and so on and so forth. Uh, then, then we understand it in the right context. Okay, so that's it. I have actually. Oh, I have a summary here. Uh, good. I wasn't sure if I created one. Okay, so quickly summarize. I interpret this is Nileshok uh, interpreting Samudra Manthan as a beautiful elegant and efficient metaphor for the development of Hindu civilization. Uh, Hindutva intellectuals at work uh, summarizing the deep antiquity of Indian civilization and its contribution to the humanity. Okay, there, there is no difference between the Bharatiya, Indian, Hindutva, Hinduism, because you know, suddenly uh, some fools have come together and uh, you know, trying to <laughs> trying to just totally childish stuff like you know, trying to create Hindutva is different than Hinduism and that kind of nonsense. So I thought I'll use that word. Uh, okay, anyways, let's go to the next one. Enough of humor. Uh, the symbolism that I think of this as a nimitta lakshan. Okay, of a samudra manthan. What it does, and I find this part extremely beautiful. And uh, because our great sages put this in the form of Samudra Manthan and that uh, symbolic uh, or beautiful story, that's why we, that's why it has survived uh, and survived with all those 14 elements because now they gave a context, you know, and uh, it's easy to remember the stories. What a great art. It's a great scientific tool, okay, scientific tool based on human tendency, the human psyche and so on. You know, we, we tend to remember stories and we want to tell stories to others. It's very important for that purposes. It's also important not to get stuck in the stories themselves. Okay. We want to enjoy it, of course. Okay. That's part of the civilization, art and whatnot, but not get so stuck to the extent we become dogmatic and also forget the purpose, but also, uh, twist it in a way by taking it literally sometime. There are some stories that are to be taken literally because they are literal events. There are stories that are meant to be um, metaphorically and they need to be understood in a metaphorical fashion. So if we look at this Samudra Manthan, what is it telling us? You know, So it's bringing together multiple facets of the civilizational development. Think of this in terms of agriculture and food production, preservation of food, Think of that as a sura, medicinal plants and herbs. Think of that as a parijata katri and a kalpa ruksha and whatnot. Their extraction and use of precious metals and stone, kaustubha can represent that. Okay, uh, count shell can represent extractions from the ocean. Domestication and use of animals is represented by kamadenu, uchchhava, airavat, and so on. Science of healthy progeny is represented through ramba. Okay, safety and security is represented through say dhanusha. But you can also say uh, Amruta Visha for a Vishaushadi and also Dhanvantari, the presence of an expert, you know, in that category. Efficient and sustainable commerce is through Lakshmi, but also you can say through horse and whichever way you want to take it. Navigation is through a very efficient understanding of astronomy. 
just like Patanjali says, Patanjali says in his Yoga Sutra that Dhyana plus Dharan plus Samadhi is equal to Sayam. But now once you become a mastery, once you attain mastery over that Sayam, now what do you do? Do you just keep on doing this? No. Now you use that. It's a symbolically said as closing the eyes and doing this thing. And of course, as a sadhana, you do it. But then you use that energy. Uh, Patanjali says it very well. All of these are to be made use of on Dasya Bhumishu, Viniyoga, right? You have to make use of it right here in terrestrial, okay? To That is the yajna, to make the life better, okay? And how does how do you do it? How do you make use of a sayam? And just as a, in way of illustration, he says, uh, uh, for example, uh, what is that? Um, uh, so, uh, uh, if you want to understand about the terrestrial, it is through Surya Sanyamat. Okay, so Bhumi Jnana through Surya Sanyamat, which is what? The chief cause of the uh, change of seasons is the sun. So if you focus, focus meaning not just stare at the sun, if you understand the sun's journey, okay, the proper motion of the sun, that's what we find in Surya Siddhanta and Arya Bhatiya, you know, the phenomenal equations, the kind of precision, uh, accuracy that was attained at the time of Mahabharata for as simple, I mean, now we think as simple, for, but a simple aspect of astronomy, such as the pos predicting the position of the sun, which was not attained, the kind of precision that was there 7,500 years ago at the time of Mahabharata. We have a empirical evidence of that. That kind of precision was not attained until last 200 years. Okay, only after with the recent uh, developments in modern astronomy, we could get that kind of precision. Last 200, 300 years max. Okay, how fascinating. Uh, so that is that symbolically represent through, represented through moon. Because say, for example, you, uh, Patanjali says that, you know, after um, like saying Surya Sanyamat, okay, Bhuvanad Jnanam Surya Sanyamat. I was not uh, remembering that specific sutra. Bhuvanad Jnanam Surya Sanyamat. Then uh, next one, I think uh, he says, uh, Chandre Tara Vihad Jnanam. If you do Sayyama, which is Dhyana, Dharana, Samadhi, the study, the focus, experiments with the moon, the position of the moon, the, the movements of the moon, then you get the Nakshatra Jnanam. Chandre Nakshatra Jnanam, right? So if you do Sayyam on this, right? And on a Dhruva, how fascinating, okay? In this series, we are looking at the astronomy evidence from Mahabharata and you'll see, we'll get to Dhruva at one point uh, in the context of Mahabharata, but also Ramayana. Dhruva tad gati jnanam. Now, how fascinating is that? Because Dhruva, we tend to think as something that does not move. Well, actually it moves, but precisely for the reason, in order to understand the motion of something, you need to have something that does not move, even in a temporary sense. That's why Dhruva, focus on a Dhruva, Dhruve tad gati jnanam. That's what Bhagwan Patanjali is telling us in, uh, uh, in uh, Yoga Sutra. It is then very interesting that, you know, when I go around and give lectures, uh, many times uh, these experts, okay, these are many times in folks in academia, you know, experts in Vakrana, experts, experts in Shiksha, experts in uh, something else, even uh, Darshana Shastra. And some, not all, but some will say, okay, Nilishji, hey, do what you want, but please don't bring this Patanjali, Patanjali Yoga Sutra into science. Please don't bring this, leave it aside. And I'm saying, what are you talking? Now, some of these actually, some of these folks actually know Patanjali Yoga Sutra by heart. They, they may be one of Sanskrit experts, <laughs> but... Uh, they will not make necessarily make that connection of how they are meant to be used in this civilizational development, civilizational inventions, making civilizational inventions. And now, of course, there are these other simpletons. So anytime they hear me say such a thing, he says, Nilaji, so tell me like how I take Patanjali Yoga Sutra and make another invention. Okay, well, that guy is not going to make an invention. <laughs> I mean, the individual may be sincere, but the individual is incapable of comprehending the deeper meanings of this. Okay. For example, like uh, how I started with Arundhati Vasishta and how that was, that turned out to be useful uh, for dating Mahabharata. 
Okay. Uh, ditto. Now, you know, you cannot say, so, okay, sir, now I want, and actually I'm not making these war stories, guys. These are the type of questions I get. Okay, so I want to date the Markandeya Purana. Nilesh Ji, can you tell me how? Well, if it is so, then I will do it. Na? What is the point of you doing it? Because if I'm going to do everything for you, then what is there left for you? Okay, so this is to be understood not in a very uh, trite, very superficial fashion. Therefore, one should take a relatively simple problem, but something that is not been solved yet and actually solve it. Then you start understanding how exciting it is, but how complex it is and how there is no guarantee of a success. And therefore, the Samudra Mantan, the whole uh, civilizational development is a very interesting story. Now we don't understand. Now, you know, we just see everything on the YouTube. Okay, the elephants are performing the dance and horses are there. But just imagine uh, the amount of effort, the amount of ingenuity that would have gone into deciding who to domesticate. The horse and then the pig and the chicken and the dog and... Uh, elephant and the cows i mean why them and why not others okay i mean of course buffalo and so on so there's so much efforts has gone into it through permutations and combination trials and errors it's not something like uh, taking buying going and buying a smartphone and just coming home plugging it in charging and you are in business okay so please don't take it on one side don't take it dogmatically and ask me uh, where, what is the birth date of uh, Matsyautar, that means you have not understood a damn thing. <laughs> and on the other side, do not take it like, oh, okay, so I want to also make some invention. Nilishji, where do I start? Well, if you're asking me, then you are disqualified to even do any invention. All the information that I'm providing, and I'm not the only one, guys, I'm just a small guy, but the number of people who are, uh, there are a good number of people who are doing this, have done it, they have published books, videos, and so on. There are many folks around the world, uh, in India, working on the ground, someone like, say, Gopal Sutariyaji with um, cows. There is another one, Rupa Relji. I forgot his first name, also with cows, and started from extremely humble circumstances and the amazing thing he's doing. Uh, learn from it. You know, just don't try to always burden them with just asking a questions. You know, learn from it. Do your own experiments, okay? There will be errors. You will learn from your errors and do things, okay? So all of this area, like why we study history, the, why we want to know about Samudra Manthan is not just like, you know, take it in a purely, uh, what do you say, a Shraddha sense and do nothing about it, okay? That's not the idea. Uh, so idea is to learn from it for efficient development, efficient and sustainable discoveries in new inventions and so on. All uh, right, so efficient and sustainable commerce, we can relate that with uh, Lakshmi, navigation with the astronomy and therefore a moon, science of time also with the astronomy, astronomy is time, calendar, and so on and so forth. I think that's all I have. Uh, all right, uh, again, my books, these are the three books, how they look on the cover, available on Amazon around the world. If you are in India, you can have the same three books, slightly different uh, cover page, different title for one, the historic drama becomes 12,209, same content from Subbu Publications and uh, do not ask um, questions on when is that translation happening. There's another thing, by the way, that happens. If you want to translate, if you think you are capable of translating any of these books, you feel passionate enough in spite of your other challenges in life, uh, then just go for it, okay? You don't need to contact me and don't involve me in any way with the translation. Of course, at some point, I need to be involved. I understand that. Uh, there is no monetary compensation of any kind, okay? Now, sometime the publisher may able to provide some. Uh, again, I do not get involved in any of this, nor do I want to spend my time on this. So if it's for monetary reason, you are doing it or with some anticipation, please don't, okay? If the books do not get translated, that's perfectly fine, but please do not waste my time. I mean, I end up uh, spending a lot of time wasting my time responding to such folks uh, in social media. Their intention is and could be very well, could be right, but 
the outcome, the end result is that it wastes a lot of my time. So please don't do it. If you think you are capable, if the language is not something I can easily read and provide a feedback, uh, say such as um, English, of course, but English you're not translating, but English, Marathi, Hindi, uh, Gujarati, I would say. Beyond that, uh, I'm uh, not in a position to necessarily uh, even look at the translation. I'm not able to read it depending on the script. Uh, then in that case, you need to create a team of two, three individuals. Okay, somebody who's good at astronomy, somebody who's good at say Mahabharata, Ramayana, these, these subjects, somebody good at the language uh, and do it. Okay, I mean, if you feel passionate, I mean, I truly appreciate that. But if you're going to involve me, no, it's not even worth trying. Okay, you are going to waste your time. You're going to definitely waste my time. And again, I'm using this forum to convey that message to you. So that next time another individual comes and says, hey, he wants to translate in some other language, say Punjabi or Assami or Bengali or Odia. Hey, absolutely. I appreciate your efforts as long as you do not involve me, okay? Because the, the challenge is, uh, I have seen many false starts for practically all the languages of India and non-Indian language, like a Spanish, Italian, uh, French, I might be missing few, okay? It, it, is a, it, it has wasted a lot of my time with no useful output, all right? Uh, so that's it on uh, Samudra Manthan. Hope uh, you like it. In any case, feel free to write your comments. Be very crisp and clean. And uh, I'll see you shortly, soon, in another uh, session, episode of Pradnya and Shraddha. So Shraddha and Pradnya and Pradnya and Shraddha. Namaskar.